Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining in. We apologize. We are running into some technical difficulties. Um, so if you just hang on for one second, um, we'll be getting started in just a minute. Again, I really apologize. Okay, so just a second. Again, thank you for everyone's patience. We we're just running into some technical difficulties. Um, I hope everyone's had um, a great Wednesday. Um, so today we're going to have our first or the second webinar about strategy for the Saving Pets Challenge. Um, there is a, a Q and A section within your Zoom. So there will be time at the end for any questions, but please feel free to use that area uh, if you have any questions. Okay, so for today's webinar, we'll be going over fundraising challenge basics, leaderboard prizes, campaign strategy, and Q and A. So just to recap some challenge basics about the Saving Pets Challenge, it is a four week campaign. So you do have ample time to fundraise. It starts September 1st at 12 p.m. and ends on September 30th at 11.59 p.m. Um, so one thing to note is really those times because any donations you receive prior to that time and any donations you receive after that time will not count. So you really wanna make sure that you're cognitive of those dates and times. It is open to US-based organizations. You can see the official rules for all the eligi eligibility requirements. Uh, and there are lots of prizes that will be available to all uh, organizations. So the primary challenge page you all have been on um, is www.savingpetschallenge.org. When the challenge starts, that's when you'll also see leaderboards in this area. You can keep track of your results, et cetera. Okay, so uh, your organization profile is going to be the primary place that people will go to uh, when on when they want to give a donation to your organization. Um, now you may have discussed this on the first webinar, but just to go over this for those who missed that first webinar, um, your as an administrator to your organization profile, you will have a dashboard available to you. In this dashboard, you can access key metrics, um, key reporting tools, and also the ability to edit information. Um, your dashboard is composed into um, key segments such as overview, organization page, fundraising, reports, checkout, settings. Um, and each one entails, as I mentioned, reporting tools, checkout tools, uh, overview has your to-do list. Um, we have a support article that breaks down each section, but if you have particular questions, um, please let us know and we're more than happy to kind of um, dive deep into um, each area. So your organization profile, uh, as I mentioned, it's going to be the primary place where people can give to your organization. Um, it's going to be where they're going to see what your mission is, why they should make a donation, or maybe why should they make a larger donation than, the, than what they were intending. So you want to make sure that your organization profile really captures your organization's mission and your brand on your profile. This is where you can customize the look and feel by adding your organization's colors, adding a logo or banner image, and also showing what's the goal that you're trying to reach for the Saving Pets Challenge. Each organization is going to have a different goal, and it's really great to add a goal so that donors have some sort of idea of what you're trying to raise and how they can help you reach your goal. Um, and also, 
within your page, it's really great to share a powerful story about your nonprofit stories about why is it important for donors to give during the Save in Pets challenge um, and what you're trying to, again, what are your goals for the overall event? When a donor goes to make a donation on your organization profile, they'll see the donation form. And on your dashboard, you'll have the ability to uh, choose what type of donation levels or descriptions that you want to add on your form. I highly recommend, if possible, adding custom donation levels and descriptions. This is a really great way to share the impact of your nonprofit. Um, so for example, um, if you, if a $25 donation um, maybe purchases or supports one dog at your shelter, that's a really great impact to share with donors as to how far their dollar can go. Uh, so the checkout flow section of your dashboard will allow you to do that. As well within the checkout flow section, you'll have the ability to build out a thank you page and also um, add a custom receipt message as well. So you can see the whole process that donors will go through when they go to make a donation. So on, as I mentioned, the Saving Pets Challenge, that's gonna be the, the hub of where all the information will happen. Um, about the challenge, where the leaderboards will be when the challenge starts. But prior to that, we do have a toolkit available for all nonprofits that are participating. So all of our webinars will be available there for you to access and review. We also have a lot of uh, FAQs, basic how-tos, and even templates. So if you're unsure of what type of social media posts to compose or what emails you should send out, we provide examples as well as logos and photos that you can utilize for your social media marketing or for your email marketing. We try to make it as easy as possible for all organizations that are participating so that uh, you know some, that's a, something that makes your life a little bit easier as you guys are participating in the challenge. All right, so let's get to the challenge prizes. I'm sure that's what you're most curious about. Uh, so $50,000 grand prize for first place winner. Um, so there are additional grand prizes, as you see, second place, third place, fourth place, fifth place, 25,000, 15,000, 10,000, 5,000. And then throughout the challenge, there's going to be weekly bonus prizes. And these weekly bonus prizes are a great way to keep donors incentivized, to keep them engaged with the campaign. Uh, so there will be small organization bonus, raise the most, most unique donors, uh, matching bonus, and much more. Okay, so for campaign strategy, just to get into a little bit more in the weeds about how you can utilize the challenges um, to help impact your uh, fundraising during this time is, as I mentioned before, are the leaderboards. So the leaderboards are going to be live. So donors and yourselves, the nonprofit administrators can go on and see where you are for each challenge. Um, so you can keep track of your current standing and utilize this information to ask donors for help. That's why this information is going to be publicly available so that you can share with donors, hey, this weekly bonus challenge um, is about, you know, most unique donors. We're in second place. How can you support us so that we can reach first place? Um, this is going to help you sustain and build momentum in your fundraising. So make sure to check out your leaderboard to know your standing. And again, for some nonprofits, it may not be to reach top five. Maybe you just want to increase your overall standing. Maybe you want to be in the top 10 or you want to be in the top 20. Utilize that information in whatever way that's best for your nonprofit. Um, so there's always a great way to utilize that message, even if you aren't in first place or in second place or third place. So one of the things that we often find on Mighty Cause are nonprofits that have overall goals for the challenge, which is great. And that's the first thing that all nonprofits should do is figure out what's your overall goal for your campaign. But one of the things that's really helpful as well with campaigns or giving events like the Saving Pets Challenge is to also map out your campaign with mini goals because that will help 
sustain and help you accomplish the major goal that you have. Um, so if you set out many goals that you have, maybe by week we want, week one, we want to accomplish A, B, and C. Week two, we want to accomplish, um, you know, X, Y, Z. Um, that will help also, um, it will help your donors really understand how far you guys are going on your throughout your fundraising. Uh, because these goals you can also share with your donors through social media or through your email marketing. Um, so for example, if after the first week you've raised $1,000 and you've reached that goal and your overall goal is $5,000, that's really great to share with your donors that by week one, we've reached our goal, we met $1,000, we're so close to reaching our overall goal of, of $5,000. And also many goals um, don't have to be necessarily, um, you know, numbers based. They can be different things. They can be, oh, we've had so and so, -and -so people share our posts on social media. We've had, um, you know, so many unique donors or we've had a matching grant. All of that information is really useful to share with your donors or people that um, your community, your network of people. As well for challenges like the Saving Pets Challenge, it's always beneficial to ask for seed donations. Um, seed donations help break the ice with donors. Um, sometimes um, it can be confusing as to who to ask, who would be great seed donors. Um, and the best people to ask are the pe people in your environment. So right, they're your board members, they're your staff, especially on the director level, highly engaged volunteer, anyone in your nonprofit circle that wants to um, participate or wants to get involved in your nonprofit, maybe in a different way that they have been before. Again, maybe it's board members that want to participate more than they have year round. This is a great opportunity for them to really make an impact for your organization. And the impact can be great because this could potentially mean that you could win a weekly prize or even a grand prize. Um, Another common strategy, I would say one of the most common strategies that organizations utilize uh, during a giving challenge, a multi-week giving challenge is matching grants. So matching grants provide donors the ability to double their impact. That's really why they're so powerful and so important in challenges like this is because it really motivates donors to not only give, but to give a larger amount than they maybe had originally decided upon. So similar to seed donations, so matching grants are going to be people, you know, most commonly it can be board members, major donors, corporate sponsors, even local businesses. Um, sometimes um, it doesn't have to be even a singular person. It can be a group of individuals. Maybe it's not just one board member, but your board members are coming together and they're going to provide a match for your giving challenge. Um, and matches can come in all different shapes and sizes. It doesn't have to be also like a numerical match where it's one to one. If someone gives $5, uh, their donation is matched by $10. Um, there are so many different matches or types of matches you can provide. And our platform provides a tool where you can enter those matches so that you can easily track that information. Uh, and to add your match onto the platform. Um, you can do so through the dashboard, through the fundraising section. There is a section called matching grants, and that's where you can go in and um, enter your match. So when you enter your match, it's going to show up as an upcoming match because um, you wanna make sure that when you enter your match through the platform, um, that you are entering the start date of the event or when you want it to start during the event. So maybe if you are going to run a match for a specific weekly bonus challenge, which you can totally do that, um, you just wanna make sure that you start it on when you want that match to actually start calculating donations. Once it's hit that start date and time, so let's say you want it to start on September 1st at 12 p.m., 
Then at September 1st at 12 p.m., um, you're going to see a notification on your uh, donate button that's going to say one matching grant is live. So donors will know that you have a matching grant that is live on, um, on your page and they know that their donation is going to make a larger impact. It's going to be doubled and it's going to make, um, they'll also see the type of match that you've entered. It will show up on the page as well. So if they want to know exactly, well, what is the type of match? And also how close are you to fulfilling your match or how far away you are, that will also be available on the platform as well. Um, one of the benefits as well as to matching grants is again, promoting the match and incorporating that into the challenge. Um, matches add a level of urgency because they're making a larger impact for your organization. So that's why they're also really great, um, not only for the entire challenge period, but for a specific weekly bonus challenge, because only in that particular week is someone's donation going to be doubled or make a larger impact for your nonprofit. So that's why they're really popular and many nonprofits will look to add matches for their challenges. Um, as well, they're also add an additional ability to talk about something on social media or with your donors. Um, you can share with them where you are with your match. If you're really close to uh, fulfilling your match, that's a really great way, again, to incentivize donors to make a donation at that time period. So one of the other ways that you can um, have people participate in your campaign, um, but in a different way than providing a seed donation or even making a match donation is asking them to participate as an ambassador for your organization. Um, so this is a really great strategy to utilize because for some people, they will not be able to provide a seed donation or be a matching grant donor or even be a donor. Um, and sometimes as well, if you have ran multiple campaigns throughout the year, there might be a tired ask that you're asking certain individuals in your network. So being an ambassador provides a different way that people can participate and support your organization. So by being an ambassador, people can actually create peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers for your nonprofit during the challenge. Um, and the reason why peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is so beneficial and helpful is that it expands your network of donors. Um, so if I am just a supporter of your organization, maybe I've uh, adopted my dog or my cat from your shelter, um, and I want to support and fundraise on behalf of your organization, I'm going to send that to my friends and family. I'm gonna send that to my coworkers. So you're already getting donors that you wouldn't have been able to uh, reach out to or receive a donation from previously. Uh, so peer-to-peer -peer fundraising and having ambassadors, it's a really great way to expand your network. And it's also a really great way to share the story of your organization, right? So if I'm that person in my example that I've adopted a dog or cat from your shelter, and I want to share that with my friends and family and share why it's really important as to why I give that, why I'm fundraising for this organization, you're having these personal stories that people are sharing on social media. They're sharing, again, the mission of your organization. So they amplify your outreach and share with more people what your organization does and your impact. So for peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, um, it can be the same people that you are considering for your matching grants and your C donations. So board members, you know, high level, uh, you know, people at your organization, but that's where you can also reach out to your volunteers staff, um, you know, the people that have directly worked with your nonprofit, um, anyone in your overall network, you know, they can be eligible to do that because all you're really asking for is like a little bit of their time and to help spread the mission of your organization. We have a lot of resources if people are interested in peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Um, so, 
feel free to also reach out to us if you need any support or need any help or have any questions about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. But we have a lot of support available as to how people can get started. And we've tried to make the platform as easy to use. Um, and one of the ways that it can be really easy to use the platform is through our team fundraising tool. So our team fundraising tool is, uh, is a page that you can create, and it's really ideal for group team peer-to-peer uh, -peer fundraisers. So as you see in the screenshot in the right-hand side, uh, this is actually a board team fundraiser. So this was a... Uh, a the board of the Animal Humane Society, they decided to come together and create a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser for the Animal Humane Society. So it's ideal for people that want to collectively donate uh, fundraise together, but also want to fundraise individually. So as you see, maybe you can see this in the screenshot, uh, but uh, in the leaderboards, you see Beth's fundraisers, Tom's fundraisers. So everyone has their own fundraising page, but there is also a collective page where you can um, see everyone's total. Um, and now you can make it specific to a group of people. So you can make it maybe board specific or volunteer specific or staff specific, or you can have everyone come together. Um, there's really no right or wrong you know, way to really do this. It just depends on what you want and what you need. So creating a page like this is really easy if this is something you're interested in. Um, if people want to join, it's also a really easy process. You can even create a template for them so that it's an easy onboarding process and some of this stuff is auto-populated for them and they don't have to write a whole description if they don't really want to do that. Um, and as well, we also provide resources as how to, you know, how those individuals can help um, send out emails and, and stay engaged throughout the campaign. So this is one option that you guys or someone on your team can create for the Saving Pets Challenge. So now that we've gone through some of the fundraising strategies, uh, I'm just going to go over some quick marketing strategies that you want to consider and think about as you're planning out your overall challenge. So with email strategy, you wanna make sure that the emails that you're sending out to your donors or to your participants is short and sweet and gets to the point and the message that you're trying to send. A strong call to action is always really helpful with uh, challenges and sharing with them exactly what is your call to action? Are you asking them to donate? Are you asking them to donate right now, to donate at a later date? How are you asking them to participate in your campaign? As well, you wanna make sure that you're segmenting your audiences. So what this means is that, um, you know, it's not one size fit all for all of the emails that you send out. Maybe for the large donors that you typically have for your nonprofit, maybe you want to send out a specific email to those people about potentially being matching grantors. Um, maybe you want to send out specific emails to your volunteers about um, making a $5 donation uh, during a matching grant period that you have. You want to make sure that the emails that you send out are targeted to the people that you're reaching out to. And that will be really helpful when you're putting all the pieces together as to how to make a successful campaign. And of course, since there are going to be weekly bonuses and challenges, uh, throughout the Saving Pets Challenge, you also really want to consider uh, the scheduling and timing of each email that you send out um, because, you know, you may want to strategize as to when you're going to reach out to who and what you're going to send them for each weekly challenge that you have. You know, maybe you want to schedule a last minute email uh, towards the end of one weekly challenge, maybe on a Thursday or Friday so that you can motivate people to give um, towards the end of a weekly bonus challenge. And of course, it's always um, great if you test out the emails before you send them out to make sure that they're mobile friendly and AB um, test and preview them. Um, and really we recommend this because 
Um, if you are sending out scheduled emails that are related to, hey, give now for this weekly bonus challenge, and you don't have a large time frame um, to maybe fix any issues that you're having with your email. So it's always great just to test it out so that when it comes time to send out those emails, that you know that you know everything will run smoothly. So in addition to email strategy, uh, social media strategy is also a really important piece to this. So you want to make sure that you post where your audience is. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram are great examples. My rule of thumb is always to post in places where you know your donors are going to be. Uh, if you know that your donors are not on Twitter, you know, then you don't need to prioritize Twitter. You want to prioritize the social media sites that you know your donors go to and where they will see information about your nonprofit. Otherwise, because there are so many pieces um, going on for this challenge, you don't need to be too concerned about the social media areas where your donors aren't going to. Um, so you also wanna make sure that when you're sending out or posting on social media, um, that you're gonna be scheduling it ahead of time. Again, this is just to help you out when the challenge comes because it might be very hectic. Um, there could be a lot going on. So it's always helpful if you schedule it ahead of time so that it eases your mind a little bit and you don't really have to worry about that um, completely um, on the day of. If you are not familiar with social media, social media is not your biggest strength. Um, that's also something in which we talked about being an ambassador. Being an ambassador can be also, um, you know, being a social media volunteer for the Saving Pets Challenge during this time period. So reach out to your volunteers to see if someone would be interested in helping run social media during this time period. Um, you know, reach out to your network of people to see if someone can help you out during this time period. Um, again, a lot of the times you may not even realize it, but someone's willing to help you out um, in, a sh in the short period of time where you need just additional hands. Um, and if you haven't before pay for social media um, posts for boosted posts previously, this might be something to consider again for the places that you know your donors will be. Um, think about posting, uh, paying for boosted posts, uh, especially if you are going to be making posts for really important um, time sensitive, uh, you know, for weekly bonus challenge, um, etc. For social media posts in general, when it comes to the content, photos uh, and stories are always really impactful when it comes to engagement. Um, so as animal organizations, um, those are always the ones that people love and look into and love reading and seeing photos about. Um, so during this campaign, feel free to share your stories about the animals that um, your nonprofit supports. Um, share their photos and videos. Maybe you want to create a social media campaign that tracks one particular animal. And you can do that at the beginning of the challenge. And when the, when the challenge ends, you still are sharing updates on this one particular animal that um, you, know, you guys are impacting or donors can help support throughout this. We do have a social media training and uh, example posts available to you. So again, if you're not sure about what to post, we also provide examples for you there as well. So one particular thing that we always like to highlight because it's really easily <laughs> forgotten is the follow-up process when the challenge ends. Everything we've talked about so far is about the challenge and before the challenge and creating the strategy, et cetera. Um, and when the challenge ends, it can be really easy to <laughs> wipe your hands and be done, but that's just the beginning because if you've received new donors or donors that have given a different amount, maybe increased their amount than ever before, this is when you wanna make sure that you're following up from the event because 
a prompt and personal thank you is going to impact if that person is going to give again to your organization or maybe participate or get involved with your organization. So it's always really helpful that after the event, you send out your thank you emails. If there's a particular donor that may be provided a matching grant, or again, they made a larger donation, you wanna consider making a personal call and thanking them personally, um, because you want to start the onboarding process of how they can become maybe a recurring donor, a, a future volunteer, a future board member, um, et cetera. Um, this is where it's really helpful to do that and can help with year round stewardship and communication. So it's always helpful after the campaign as well to close up any stories that you may have started or talked about. As I mentioned in my example just a couple of minutes ago, maybe you, you part of your social media or your email uh, marketing is that you're going to be sharing a story about a particular animal um, and how donations or your goal will impact um, that particular animal. If there is uh, you know, an end to your story, that's a really great way to follow up with your donors to say, hey, we've reached our goal. And because our goal, you know, X, Y, and Z was able to happen. Um, so it's a really, that's a really great useful tool to utilize for your follow-ups. So for any questions that you have, uh, feel free to reach out to our support team, um, support at mightycause.com. Um, our support team is available from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, again, we are here to provide as much support as we can. So if you have any questions, um, technological questions, or in general, you're not sure if peer-to-peer -peer is right for you, um, you don't, you're a little bit hesitant, feel free to reach out to us and we're more than happy to provide as much guidance or insight as we can. Um, so please let us know if you have any questions, we're more than happy to help. Okay, so now we're going to jump into questions. Um, so let's open up our questions. All right. Okay, so um, the first question we have is, when do you think the social media guide will be available? Um, I don't have the answer for you right now, um, but um, I can reach out to you afterwards and see when it will be available. Okay, could a match be a discount at a retailer? Also, could you have a different match for a different time period? Uh, that's a really great question. So could a match be a discount at a retailer? Unfortunately, no. Um, so one, um, all donations on our platform are processed through Mighty Cause Charitable Foundation, which is a donor advised fund. Um, so you cannot provide technically IRS rules is that you can't provide a good or service um, in exchange for a donation. It has to be a pure contribution. Um, so unfortunately, a discount at a retailer would not be eligible. Um, and as well, a match would be an example of a match would be, um, you know, if you have a grantor that gives you $1,000, um, this is the most popular, most common type of match. But uh, if someone provides you $1,000, then maybe it's a one-to-one -one match um, where if someone makes a $5 donation, it's doubled by $10 until the $1,000 is fulfilled. So that's the most common type of match. You can also do unique donors so that if you have a $1,000 matching grant, if you receive 20 unique donors, your organization receives that $1,000. That's the kind of the most common type of matches. Um, could you have a different match for different time periods? Um, so when you set up a match, you can't choose the time period. Uh, well, I'm sorry, I'm thinking about the time zone. So yeah, you can have different time periods. So you can set up a match to start. First of all, you can set up so many different types of matches. So if you are fortunate enough to have different matches, you can set up as many as you want and you can set them to go individually as whenever you want and for how long as you want. 
So, um, you know, I've seen before people have a match for uh, each weekly type of challenge. So you could have a match start for one weekly challenge and ends at that time, starts another for the second weekly challenge, ends during the weekly challenge, et cetera. So yes, you can have different ones. Um, okay, so if we have a foundation who's offering a one-to-one -one match up to $500 on all donations, can we use them for this challenge? Yes, I mean, a match can come from anywhere. So um, you can feel free to add that on the platform. Um, so feel free, yeah, if you can, if you can definitely add um, a match if, if foundation's offering to provide you a match up to $500. Um, okay, so uh, we, uh, we're also doing our annual event the same month. So I was looking for an option outside the monetary match. Um, yeah, so um, as I mentioned, matches don't necessarily have to be monetary. So yes, um, a grantor, you know, would have to provide, um, you know, a, a certain amount. But also, I think sometimes nonprofits get hung up that it has to be a large amount. It has to be five thousand dollars or thousand dollars. Matches can be a you know can be a hundred dollars, right? There's no rules to a match. The idea of a match is that for a donor, they feel like they can make a larger impact for their donation. So even if it's a hundred dollar match, and you're asking donors, hey, if you make five dollars, it's going to be ten dollars, right? There's there's they're going to feel like they're going to make a larger impact, and they're more willing to donate. Um, and so you can set up your match, it doesn't have to be necessarily one-to-one. -one. It can be just like you're looking for 10 donors and it doesn't, amount, it doesn't matter the amount that they're making. We just need 10 donors in order to reach our match. Okay. Um, so this webinar will be added to the uh, webinar section. Um, when we're finished with this. So if you need to review this or look um, back at this, you can feel free to do so. Um, and again, if there are any other questions that you have, if something comes up after this webinar, please reach out to us. We're so more than willing to help out and help answer any questions that you have. That's what we are here for. And we wanna make sure that you guys have the most successful campaign that you can have. Um, so please let us know. Um, I don't see any other questions coming in. Uh, so again, if you have any other questions, please reach out to us. I apologize for the delay. We had some technical difficulties, but I hope this was helpful for everyone. Um, and we look forward to hearing from you soon. Okay, thank you so much, everyone, and have a great day.